Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, no, I totally agree. Like if we want legacy to be successful, we, we have to make sure that everyone understands all the deck names. They just need to be like really clear and, and straightforward. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we agree about that. You know, we, would, we don't want to gatekeep by using ridiculous deck names. Hello, folks, Phil Gallagher of Thraben You here. And today we're going to be playing with Merit Lodge. <laughs> Get it? Because it's like Merit Lodge. But like Lodge, where you live. All right, ne never mind, never mind, never mind. <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and we're going to take a look at them after round one. So, a while back, I played this deck that put Felidar Retreat into play, and I was like very surprised by how good that was. And then today, I got this donation where they wanted to abuse how good Felidar Retreat can be by putting multiple lands into play per turn cycle with things like Elvish Reclaimer, Knight of the Reliquary, and Crop Rotation. Um, and this is a really intriguing build. Was the deck list submitted because the pun name was really funny? No comment. <laughs> In case you're not familiar with this card, it has Landfall. So whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, note that's not play a land, but enters the battlefield under your control, you either get a 2-2 white cat beast creature token, or you put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain vigilance until the end of turn. So the idea is with the first couple you get some cats, and then after that you just kind of scale them up. And considering like you can knight of the reliquary into a fetch land and then fetch again and do things of that general nature, you can actually ramp out a lot of lands especially if you have ways to rebuy some of them from your graveyard. Generally speaking, this shell is going to look really familiar. It's going to look like the green-white depth shell that you're used to seeing in Legacy. So overall, our game plan involves using Thespian Stage to copy Dark Depths. And long story short, you get a 2020 Black Avatar creature token with Flying Indestructible when you do that. And our backup plan is to just beat our opponent to death with Knight of the Reliquaries or Elvish Reclaimers, both of which get larger as more lands are in the graveyard, or we can use Felidar Retreat. Now, quick check on Felidar Retreat. It's put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control, and those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. So something really neat that we can do here is play a land drop, give our Knight of the Reliquary and Elvish Reclaimer vigilance, attack with them, and then use their abilities in combat, since we didn't have to tap to attack with them, to gain more plus one plus one counters or more cats. So this is a really neat idea. This is some cool deck building. And kind of the biggest question I have is like, will we have enough here to keep up with the combo decks? Because um, you kind of look, there's no force of will, there's no force of negation. So in game one, we're largely trying to just race as an opposing combo deck. For the post sideboard games, like we do have some things like Deafening Silence, but we're maybe not going to be the best versus combo decks, generally speaking. I think we're hoping to play against fair blue stuff. So obviously, this will be a league where I get paired against Reanimator five times in a row and I'll tilt off. Although, admittedly, like we have four copies of Endurance, that helps quite a bit. As far as other sideboard options go, most of these things are going to be Green Sun Zenith targets, just because like we have access to that in the main deck already, or very niche lands that we might want to tutor up, but we don't necessarily have room for in the main deck. So for example, Tower of the Magistrate is very good against things like Cauldra and Batterskull, and Glacial Chasm can help us in a pinch versus some decks that really pressure our life total aggressively early on. There's one card here that I probably think is too cute, and that's Hall of Heliod's Generosity, which allows you to put an enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. I don't really know that that's worth the slots, but it's in the deck list, and it's kind of a cute idea. And if we want to maximize Felidar Retreat, like, I get it. I think with that being said, I'm ready to go ahead and jump directly into the games here. Uh, should be a lot of fun. If you're new here and you like what you see today, please consider subscribing. And if you're a regular, throw me a like before this video begins. That's one of the easiest ways to support my content for free. 
find yourself in the financial position to support me, you can do so by becoming a YouTube member, joining my Patreon, or doing a donation deck list. Let's do it. Let's play Merit Lodge. All right, round one. Um, I have an incredibly fast combo hand. Um, I will be keeping this hand. We don't necessarily like want to get to the point where we're doing Felidar Retreat, um, but this is super cool. So I'm going to go Yavamaya into Elvish Reclaimer on turn one, and if my opponent has like a Source of Plowshares or Prismatic Ending, um, it's somewhat likely that this eats that here. Um, we could be playing against a Jeskai Control deck from the look of things. Yep, okay, there is the Prismatic Ending. And uh, I think I'm going to play Thespian Stage. If my Yavimaya were to get Wastelanded, it would be very awkward for me. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play this past the turn, and we can attempt a Dark Depths on my next turn. An opponent will have to have Swords to Plowshares, or they die. Cool, cool. Now... I can also choose not to just go for it turbo here, because my opponent's probably a control deck. I can just like wait and like play Knight of the Reliquary into Felidar Retreat here. Like play a fair game and then kill my opponent eventually. That actually sounds safer to me. It's not the hand that wins the fastest, but it's probably the hand that wins the hardest. A little awkward playing Knight of the Reliquary like directly into Lightning Bolt if that's something that my opponent is doing. But like my opponent's missing land drops as of right now. Yeah, that's why I didn't want to go for it. Yeah, so I've exhausted two white removal spells from my opponent already. Um, Dark Depths currently taps four mana. Let's play ball. This is just Felidar Retreat into Felidar Retreat, and I will merit Lodge at some point in the not too distant future. All right, that is a force pitching force. I think outside of something like a hull breacher combo that just like offers a huge one-sided thing in favor of my opponent, I'm like beyond good here. Um I just I just feel like I'm being a bully right now. I'm not going to lie to you. Okay. Do we have a force of negation as well? Like if you got it, you got it. That is a force of will pitching snapcaster mage. Being Snapcaster Mage, I'm going to go ahead and take this turn off to Bojuka Bog, my opponent, to make their life more awkward. And now I've just got this Dark Depths combo versus my opponent's one card. I also can just uh, Green Sun for some other creature. Um, crop Rotation is extremely good as well. So I've got Make Merit Lodge with 1, 2... Three mana available. One of that can be crop rotation. Two of that can be playing around a spell pierce effect. Sounds fine. I'm going to take a quick look at my creatures. Yeah, this is... This is fine. So can I go one, two, green sun for elvish reclaimer while still making merit lodge? And the answer is yes. And do that while also holding up crop rotation. So let's go ahead and do a Green Sun for X is 1. Pick up a Reclaimer, pass the turn. And we'll uh, see what my opponent says about me comboing off and trying to kill them. Alright, Thespian Stage. Target Dark Depths, paying 1 and 2. So keep the 1 with no ice counters, which is what allows me to go and make my 2020 creature. Um, I'll play out this land, I suppose. And I can't imagine a world now where this doesn't kill. Alright, um, yeah, 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 you, you know, you know. Alright, I very much like how I navigated that game. Opponent never got a source of card advantage, they never got, you know, a Teferi, a Narset, something like that, which feels like what they needed. So I know my opponent has Snapcaster Mage. That makes Endurance slightly more interesting. All of Heliod's generosity is also kind of interesting, right? So, like, in this matchup, unless my opponent very specifically has, like, a Merktide Regent, which is possible, but unless they have something like that, I don't really need access to Maze of Ith. So I think I'm into making this swap. It actually nets me a little tiny bit of mana. And 
then I can decide what, if any, of these five cards I'm interested in. I'm a little less keen on crop rotation in the face of all these counter spells that I'm seeing, but it does allow me to make spots like what I just made where I can just easily win. I think I still go down some number of these. Um, it's also possible I don't need all of these swords to plowshares and prismatic ending. I think I'm going to become a little more threat dense, and I think I'm going to junk a crop rotation for a sylvan library there. This leaves me with a couple of cards that can mess with things like Planeswalkers or Opposing Creatures. Because there's probably, you know, a Mentor, a Merktide region or something in there. I probably want some amount of this stuff. And then, like, my question is, like, do I want to take more crop rotations out beyond this? Because I don't really want to go turbo combo. Like, I want to play the exact game that I just played again where I, like, force my opponent to use their resources on these and then I just kill them with my lands in a very uninteractive way. That might mean being slightly heavier on Prismatic Ending versus Swords to Plowshares. I'll buy that. How is this hand? Hand can get a Dryad Arbor, play turn 2 Ramunap, turn 3 Felidar, assuming nothing goes wrong. I'm not, like, overly excited about this hand, but I think I'm just going to keep it. Unsure. I think this one is a Borderline Mulligan. Um, crop rotation is interesting in regards to making the combo happen, but I'm not super, super interested in trying to make the combo happen right now. I'm unsure if I'm supposed to get basic forest. I actually didn't really see very much of my opponent's deck last game. Ooh, are we getting a spell pierce? We're getting a fluster storm. Yeah, so there's there's worlds where my opponent like now wastelands me and I'm in very bad shape for not going and fetching a basic land here. But given double white card in hand and given the prismatic vista based mana base that I've already seen, this feels okay. Um, I like that draw. I think that means this is my play. We're not playing into like Snapcaster Flusterstorm yet. And I think I'm just interested in grabbing Elvish Reclaimer this turn rather than going for the acceleration of Dryad Arbor. I can't play Felidar Retreat next turn anyway. My land's going to enter tapped. All right. What do you have for me? The Fairy is fine. A little annoying in terms of tempo, but it's very much not the end of the world. Uh, Flagstones is good. That means I can play um, Felidar Retreat next turn. I think my order here is Elvish Reclaimer first to see if my opponent counterspells it, and if they do, I get to Bojuka Bog one more card out of their graveyard. All right, fantastic. Now, this card is annoying in this matchup specifically because it can allow my opponent to use a Prismatic Ending at instant speed, which kind of uh, breaks some of the rules of magic. Cycling Timeless Dragon. Okay, so now I've got a slightly better idea of my opponent's threat base. I think we have another Prismatic Ending, yeah. They don't want to do that one at Sorcery Speed here because they don't want me to activate and uh, find a goodie. Okay. I think I'm interested in just jamming here. And by that, I mean like the Felidar Retreat specifically. I can't get the immediate cat value out of it this turn, but... This card is pretty hard to answer uh, via something like a Prismatic Ending, so I'm likely to be able to do a few cool things with this in the next turn cycle or so. I'm a little lighter on green mana than I otherwise might like to be. If my opponent has any cool tech here. Three mana. Cycle a Shark Typhoon. That's fine. Everything's A-OK -okay here. So the only way I get two green mana this turn involves playing Ramunap Excavator. So I believe I'm going to go ahead and start there. Yeah, I believe I'm going to start there. All right, fantastic. This gets me Windswept Heath. And uh, we're going to opt to go wide here, because I'm not expecting damage-based removal. Now, I'm going to use the Mox Diamond this turn. I think I'm going to grab a basic. My gut tells me to grab a basic here. All right. 
we're going to make a 2 2. I can now play a Mox Diamond, discard that land, and play Prismatic Ending on Teferi. That's green, white. Let's do black and exile that uh, Planeswalker. Now I've got this Felidar Retreat in play. I'm going to go wide of what my opponent is doing. I'm insulated versus something like a Supreme Verdict, and my opponent only has a Shark Token in play. Like, this feels like a pretty strong position, even if, like, the... Even if the Ramunap Excavator, for example, were to die. Just picking something totally random that could occur. All right. At... At... I don't know that my opponent's Ruination is good enough here. Surgical Extraction on Thespian Stage. Do I care? Like, I can cast a Crop Rotation in response, but I don't think I care. You've got it. So, I care about the planes the least here. I'm going to go ahead and cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing the planes. I'm going to use that to grab... Windswept Heath, I think. I'm going to put a plus one, plus one counter on my creatures here. Oh, I should have played Elvish Reclaimer first, actually. I was thinking about, like, counter spells and wanting to have open mana. Um, but I missed a counter on this, technically. Oh, which is a mistake on my end. Dryad Arbor? No, probably Savannah. Dryad Arbor's real cute, though. Alright. Plus one, plus one counter. On my cats. Go to combat. Bash in for a very large amount of Vigilant damage. This halves my opponent's life total. They have to have a Supreme Verdict-like card. I don't think individual removal spells are going to get there. Yeah, that, it, that does not do it. I believe my opponent is deterministically dead. Yeah, even if they have double removal spell, that's not happening. Holy crap, this deck feels good. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com. Moxfield is a deck building website for Magic the Gathering, but they do a lot more than that. Uh, in addition to just deck building, you can also use it as a collection tracker, keeping track of what versions of cards you own, their condition, language, and even price, although that can sometimes be a little bit scary. So if you're looking for a website that can kind of do it all at once, please consider checking out Moxfield. They support my content. All right. Am I keeping the hand that just makes a turn 3 Merit Lodge? Okay. It's really weird that this hand has no spells, but it's probably fine. This races a lot of decks. Uh, Goblins? We don't race a Muxus here. Prismatic ending off the top! I have main deck Maze of Ith, right? I need to check. I need to check. There is main deck Maze of Ith. That is what's happening... I'll do this off of probably a Savannah. That was a that was a pretty good draw. They could have absolutely just gotten punked otherwise. And this feels like one of those things that like very reasonably could actually race me. All right, so Savannah, crop rotation, sacrificing it. Grab Maze of Ith, Maze Goblin Lackey. And uh, hopefully I don't get Wastelanded, because if that happens, I'm in the same position as last turn, just worse. Uh, not technically a... Oh, they didn't port me. Well, I guess they can port me on their turn, right? Dryad Arbor. We're playing that, right? That's, that's the blocker for Goblin Lackey. And then I have two things that they have to maze to get in. Well, this game got awkward. My potence for Shadenport is so fucking good right now. Holy shit. Alright, you have tapped my Maze of Ith. Yes, I will trade the, the shit out of Goblin Lackey here. Like, that's why I played this card. Absolutely done. An opponent just views this as like a removal spell and hopes their Aether Vial can tick up in a meaningful way. The spell at our retreat is probably not relevant this game. Like, these are my next three land drops. Um, I don't need the green mana yet for any reason. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and play Thespian Stage here. On the off chance that I draw, like, Ancient Tomb specifically, I guess there's lines where I might want to copy Maze of Ith. 
All right, um, this is probably the Horde Master, if I were to guess. Oh no, it is a Mog War Marshal at sorcery speed. No. So if opponent just sacks all out here, this can be Muxus, which is a disaster for me. Uh, it's Goblin Matron. That's not the end of the world. Next turn's scary, though. Just a Goblin Matron. It isn't necessarily what I was expecting here. Oh, no, I guess it's good value, because they can take up Aether Vial, put it in, and then cast Muxus next turn. That's fine. I really think I need a relevant draw here. Yeah, that's acceptable. I kind of missed on the whole relevant draw thing. Um, I think I'm dead. Yeah, I think my opponent vials in Matron, looks for Muxus, casts Muxus, and I die the vast majority of the time. There's other lines that could happen, but that's what I'm seeing from my side of the battlefield, because that's three six mana, assuming my opponent sacrifices these three things. That leaves them with Skirk Prospector in play. Okay, they've got a Mog War Marshal first, uh, which is a plus one mana. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, so now I, now I have to hope that like my opponent's Muxus is bad so that I can win with Merit Lodge next turn. Okay, I think they are supposed to leave that. I think they are supposed to tap that land rather than sacrifice one more goblin right now. Okay, that was a pretty bad Muxus. I can potentially beat this. The Muxus doesn't get to attack this turn. I can use Maze of Ith to attempt to deal with this next turn. Um, this is free for me. Although I guess they have for shot and port, right? Oh, they can sack a goblin to port me. That's actually a really good line. Ooh. Yeah, that's scary. Do I want to copy Maze of Ith? No, I don't think I do. Okay, no, I like my opponent's line. I, I take it back. An Endurance. I don't mind that. I can cast that. So a lot of this is going to depend, like, how much more does my opponent have. Because I probably beat this. If my opponent, like, vials in Ringleader and then vomits another card. No, don't do it. And then vomits another card or two into play. Life becomes tough. Oh, why did I say it? All right, four cards entered the Rezeal zone. They whiffed. This Muxus can hit me for eight. All right. I can tap this for green mana and use that to cast Endurance. And I will go ahead and send that stuff back into my opponent's deck. Every card I add to their deck that is not Muxus is A-OK -okay with me. Okay. Um, I will just soak up seven damage here and be perfectly happy with that. And now I get to make a Merit Lodge unless my opponent has, like, Wasteland specifically. Okay. There's some damage to me. There's a Goblin Crater Maker. That's fine. It doesn't do anything. Source of Plowshares is nice insurance. So I'm going to make my thing. And then I guess play Flagstones. I guess I'll play the Flagstones now. Two mana. Thespian's Tage. Target Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. Make my Merit Lodge. And right now I'm thinking about whether or not I actually use this source of plowshares. It's actually very awkward, because if I use this, it puts my opponent to above 20. So I believe I do not use this, as awkward as it is to leave my opponent with Peshalik Mons in play. Like, this, this is scary. It's possible I'm supposed to use it on the Skirk Prospector. That puts my opponent exactly to 20. And now, seeing this on this stack, I probably do do that. A little awkward that I didn't do it on my turn if I was going to do it. All right. I think it was a misplay to not just do this at sorcery speed. All right, so that is firing off a shock at me. That's fine. There's a red mana. I go to 12. That fizzles the swords to plowshares. Now my opponent doesn't have a sacrifice outlet. Okay, there's the concession. I don't think I played that one perfectly, but I'm very happy that I won it. I was supposed to remove the Skirk Prass Spectre on my turn. Just a little safer. Okay, I think I want to have access to Glacial Chasm. It's not something that I'm going to, like, fetch super frequently. 
but it really helps with some of the combo kills. Goblins sometimes will board in something like a Caracas. I'm just going to keep that in mind rather than like board anything or change any play patterns to specifically deal with that. I think I'm interested in Prismatic Ending. I think I'm probably interested in Collector Oof to shut off Aether Vial. It's just a little awkward because of how good Mox Diamond is for me. So I may or may not actually end up doing that. I probably don't need Bojuka Bog in this matchup. That can be replaced with Glacial Chasm. It's not quite a one-for-one. -one. Like, the lands have different functions, and this one, like, is much worse at producing mana than Bojuka Bog is, but I think I get to take out one utility land of some kind. I'm unsure how good Felidar Retreat is here, because it's slow, and as we saw, the first couple turns of the game are kind of the scary ones for me, in a lot of ways. Because, like, the Goblin Lackey starts are terrifying, but when my opponent doesn't have the Goblin Lackey start, like, Felidar Retreat is going to gum up the ground very well. I'm really unsure how to sideboard here. Because, like, Endurance is a flash creature that's pretty good at ambushing my opponent's attackers. I'm going to trim Felidar Retreat to just have more early removal and call this good without bringing in, like, the Collector Oof. The additional copies of Prismatic Ending should hopefully be enough for Aether Vial starts. Um, this hand is fine. This hand is very good against my opponent's initial permanents that they can have. Like, if this is an Aether Vial or a Goblin Lackey, either way, I have it covered. Yeah, it is a Goblin Lackey. And now I just have to decide whether I want to use uh, Prismatic Ending or Swords to Plowshares on it. I think either way I'm fetching basic planes right now. I don't want to be Wastelanded just yet. I think this is Prismatic Ending. I think you lead on the Aether Vial if you have both in hand. And then I'll kind of see where this hand goes. I have one half of my combo already. Alright, Mog War Marshal is fine. I don't really want to sorts the plowshares that like I would if Bush came to shove. I'm not excited about that. I think instead this is just a fetch turn. Uh, again, I don't really want to be wastelanded immediately here. So I think I'm just going to grab Elvish Reclaimer. And I'm going to hope to just kind of stall out the ground here. Yeah, expected that to be sacrificed. That's a-okay. My Elvish Reclaimer can be a large creature as of next turn. See what my opponent has going on. Crater Maker's fine. My opponent can sacrifice that to kill Reclaimer here. A-okay with that. Totally fine with taking one. I would love to draw a combo piece here. Swords to Plowshares. I don't think I need to hold these up in this turn cycle. Um... Land into Skark Prospector is exactly 6 mana for a Muxus, which could be awkward. But that would require 3 of my opponent's cards to be exactly the same thing. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and tap out for Ramunap Excavator here. Off Yavamaya, I think, to keep Savannah in hand. Yes, I like that. Alright, there is my Ramunap. See what my opponent has to say about this. Right, that's three mana for Peshalik Mons. Without a Sacrifice Outlet in play, that card is not particularly scary, so this is A-OK. -okay. A Mox Diamond. That's fine. I'm okay with playing that. It makes me better versus Rashadon Port. Um, so I'll Junk Savannah here, and I might just grab Windswept Heath in case I want to fetch a Dryad Arbor. I think I'm into that. I also think I'm into just swords to plowsharing this creature. It's not particularly good right now, but it very much can become good. I also think I'm into making this attack, because I would like to put my opponent back to below 20. So a single Merit Lodge hit is lethal. Okay, yeah, that's, uh, that's opponent giving it up. Uh, GG's. All right, I've kept my opening hand for this round here. I think the interesting thing is whether or not I green sun for Dryad Arbor or play Elvish Reclaimer on turn one. I think I'm actually going to green sun for Dryad Arbor here. The reason being that 
I don't want my only green source to be wastelanded here. That would be a pretty huge detriment to me. And this also ramps me into a turn 2 Knight of the Reliquary if I draw a white source. This also gives me a more attractive thing to uh, reclaim her out of play. Out of play. Opponents of fan of the old channel, which is always nice to hear. Hope you enjoy watching the uh, the replay, the commentary, in about a week when this goes live. <laughs> Carpet o' flowers. Not today. Not today. So this is a really cool opportunity. My opponent was super cheeky and got to, like, tap their Verdant Catacombs in order to produce mana. And now I get to Wasteland a fetch land. How disgusting is that? Um, and I think I use my Green Sun to fish up an Elvish Reclaimer here rather than just play the one from my hand to be more mana efficient. So my opponent could be playing something like Enchantress, but I think it's more likely that my opponent is some blue mid-range pile that has, like, geared very specifically for the mirror. Do I want to play Knight of the Reliquary? How fast is this game going? Because I can just try to combo off next turn. I have such good resources in hand versus a blue deck, though, that I don't think I'm super interested in that. And I probably should have attacked first. Um, just in terms of my opponent maybe using a Swords of Plowshares or something. Opponent's notably not a Yorian deck. No Covered Island. Okay. That adds more faith in my analysis that I am playing against a fair blue deck of some kind. So in this turn cycle, I can pay two mana, or no, um, I've just got combo. I can tap Dryad Arbor, get Thespian Stage. Yeah, I think I'm pretty good here, actually. All right, I need, I need to math out my mana exactly. So I have one, two, three, four. I'll have five total mana. Two of that, which let's say is these two, goes towards Dark Depths combo. Who goes towards Dark Depths combo? Oh, right, Yavamaya. Yavamaya is the missing piece. I knew I had an extra mana. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to just chill here. I just need to not rotate Yavamaya out of play stupidly. Yeah, that's, that's fine. I can still win through that pretty easily. Especially if my opponent does not show white mana in this turn cycle. Okay, there's white mana. So there's now worlds where my opponent is alive. All right, so let's dry it, Arbor. Sacrifice it. Pick up Thespian Stage. Float mana with this. Thespian Stage. Target Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. Uh, and good to go. I don't need to tap Elvish Reclaimer here. I really wish I drew a land there. Makes everything so much cleaner if I just draw a land. I don't think I'm going to go for the kill immediately. I think I'm just going to let them block and hold up the shields. This is fine. I think my position is strong enough where that, that's acceptable. I've just got two layers of protection available. Yeah, your brainstorm is fine. It's possible I'm playing too cowardly here, though. Like, I can just try to end this before my opponent can put together a string of things that can beat me. But, like, I feel much safer going for it next turn when I can have, like, like if I draw a land where I have, like, Crop Rotation and Elvish Reclaimer, like, both available. Fine. Another reason why I don't feel like I have to go for it here is that I'm not in danger of my opponent's Uro putting them above 20, which is kind of a big deal. Ponder's fine. There's a Shuffle. That makes me feel good. Oh, sure. I think my opponent's dead for playing that card. Or they could make the bird, actually. Alright, so they're going to attempt to kill my thing. 
you a legend? If I remember that correctly, no, you're not a legend. All right, so let's go two mana. Activate Elvish Reclaimer. Junking Caracas. That gets me one of these. And I will choose my Merit Lodge, giving it protection from blue. And now I just use the other one to kill my opponent by giving pro blue again. Oh, fantastic. This is just an extra layer of insurance. So I'll go one, two, activate this, sacrificing this, get the second one of these. Go pro blue on Merit Lodge. And that is the win. There are some little things I could have done differently, like involving the Knight of the Reliquary sequence and going for it earlier or sooner or later. But like given that my deck is full of things like Felidar Retreat, I don't feel super obligated to just go for it ASAP. So now I get to play the what deck is my opponent playing game. And the only time that I've seen that blue thing see play... Uh, what is that blue thing called? Aether Channeler. The only time I see that see play is in Aluren. So I think I'm actually going to kind of assume that I am playing against Aluren and board in some Force of Vigors. Um, I'm not sure where to board from there. Like, Uro is a very real card that my opponent's deck is probably playing, so playing more copies of Endurance is probably a good idea. Then I have, like, Force of Vigor and Technically Endurance as, like, these free cards that I can pitch to interact with my opponent. It's more likely that I just cast a fair Endurance. I'm probably not casting a Prismatic Ending for X equals 4. I just don't think that's happening. And I don't know if I want to play this card. It, it, it's, like, free with Aluren, but I still require another mana. So I'm thinking about this, and I'm also thinking about the copies of Endurance. I guess my crop rotations get slightly worse versus the counter spells that my opponent has. I don't play crop rotation when I'm on the draw. I can board like this, and I don't hate that, but I might play some crop rotations on the play. Um, double Mox Diamond on turn one. Cast Green Sun for X is one. Or single Mox Diamond on turn one, discarding planes. Playing Thespian Stage. Cast Green Sun for X is one. <clears throat> this isn't bad. The double green cards are like a little awkward here unless I fetch Dryad Arbor. I think I'm going to keep this hand though. Hand is, if nothing else, interesting. Like it has a pretty good fair beatdown game. It has a pretty good acceleration game. A lot of flexibility. Oh, this is just three mana on turn one. That's interesting. All right, so let's go Mox Diamond. Discard a stage. Mox Diamond. Discard a planes. Play a stage. I'm going to play mana inefficiently here. Grab a Reclaimer. And if I draw a land... I can turn whatever land I draw into into Thespian Stage, and if I don't draw a land, I get an attack for one, or I get to hold up Endurance, and, like, I'm okay with both of those worlds. Okay, there is a land. I think, given that, I'm going to go ahead and just pass the turn. All right, no immediate Ice Fang Kowaddle. See what my opponent can find with this Ponder. Uh, but this is definitely a scary spot for them. I'm going to go ahead and fetch here. Um, I never want Dryad Arbor, I don't think. Yeah, I think I never want Dryad Arbor. So I'll sacrifice that Dryad Arbor. Grab the Dark Depths. Uh, another Mox Diamond, not great here. I am... Actually interested in attacking with this, in case my opponent plays Uro. Yeah, I think I'm interested in attacking with that. Like an Ice Fang Coatl going to the graveyard here is a win for me, I think. Yeah, that's that's fine. Because that's something that does not block the Merit Lodge next turn. It does mean that an Uro puts my opponent out of range of immediately 
dying to Merit Lodge, though, which is a pain. Yeah, that's exactly the situation that I drew up. So that puts my opponent to 22. It's a super relevant number. I think that means that I actually cast Endurance in this turn cycle rather than make the Merit Lodge immediately, because either way it's a turn two turn clock and this just takes care of the Uro, and then I don't have to necessarily top deck a green source or a land to make that happen. There's also a world where I do a pitch cast thing, but I'm not super interested in that timeline, I don't think. All right, what are we drawing? Another Mox Diamond. All right, so this puts my opponent to below 20 again. Is nice. I do have to be fearful of Aluren, but none of the lines that I took killed on my attack step there. Like the previous turn, I was very specifically trying to play around Uro, and I failed at doing that. Let's see if my opponent has it. All right, something's happening. Black mana? Okay, that's fine. The artifact creature and enchantment with mana value X or less. Yeah, that's fine. This is blue, blue. I don't really care about that. All right, so they're using it to blow up my Mox Diamonds. That means it's time. That's being stage. Target Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. Now, notably, this token is indestructible, which means that Pernicious Deed does not destroy it. Alright. I was always going for it there. Like, unquestionably. Um, I think I hold this all in my hand at this point. Like, my opponent did not have very many outs to that, and, like, there was a world where that was a misplay and they didn't realize the token was indestructible or something. But, like, with blue, blue available, there's... I'm not gonna say it's, like, only Merit Lodge, but there's very few options for what my opponent could have that are relevant. Definitely a little punished for my double Mox Diamond start there. Well, okay, yeah, there's the Alluren. All right, like, if you got the combo, you got the combo. I'll just concede to it. Alright, Shardless Agent into a Thoughtseize. Absolutely. So, I lose a Mox there. Uh, like, do you have a Cavern Harpy or Equivalent? Oh, it's another Wasteland. That's awkward. I believe my opponent can cast this from Exile for free, right? Game player may cast Creature Spells with mana value 3 or less without paying their mana cost. And so as they had Flash. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about, like, from a hand or anything. Um, so I'm going to make that... Land drop, attack with endurance. I think hold back the mox. I've seen like two thought seizes already. And I'm I think I'm more likely to run in. Oh, it's their own endurance. Sure. That's fine. Actually, I'm nuking my graveyard super relevant for like top decked knights and such. Um anyway, finishing the thought, I think it's more likely that yeah, and I like that block. I don't think you double block there. I think it's more likely that my opponent has an Abrupt Decay type card that they will play rather than my opponent plays a third Thoughtseize effect. Um, my Felidar retreats notably on this exact board, not particularly looking strong. All right, I will take five here. That's okay. And now Endurance goes back on block duty. Second Aluren, just in case. That's fine. Uh, Outland Liberator. I mean, I'm going to put that into play. Guard the Wasteland. Uh, what is the wording of this? The player casts no spell during their own turn. It becomes night next turn. But it doesn't start keeping track of that until I play a day-night card, I believe. I can cast this for free with a Lurin. So I guess might as well wait. All right. Aether Channeler, pretty good here. So my opponent can return like a Shardless Agent to their hand. This actually might be a moment just to like awkwardly play the Outland Liberator and destroy the Shardless Agent so that my opponent can't start grinding value. Because my opponent cascading into a, uh, a Cavern Harpy here, for example, would be disastrous. This isn't quite the uh, punishment that I was hoping it might be. 
Like I was hoping to use this to destroy multiple Alurans and just like eliminate that aspect of the threat. Alright. Are we chilling? I think the chilling here very much favors my opponent. Um, I'll play that, give my creature pro, pro blue or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Um, this is all very awkward. Like, we've, we've both got air in our deck that we can draw, but my opponent, like, is... Their deck is built to play a bunch of cantripping creatures. I like that. Can't really become the beatdown here. Like, I've got a four-turn clock, and my opponent has a two-turn clock if I attack. Um, and, like, the source of flash shares complicates the clock in both directions. All right. Nice, slow, easy game of magic. Actually... Now I can attack. Maze of Ith makes that a lot safer. There. Fine, I'll just untap my creature. I guess if I was going to do that, I have to sort of splash his endurance first. That was dumb. Yeah. I gave up a little ground there. I don't think it's relevant ground, but it's a little bit of ground. Ooh, I don't like that. Um, so this gets popped off at Aether Channeler, because that's the scariest thing that my opponent could replay again and again and again. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, this is what I wanted to avoid. But now my opponent bounces the Channeler. The Source to Plowshares fizzles. The Thought Seize still resolves. They still take two, which, like, that's very relevant given that my opponent is at nine. What can this bounce? Target non-land permanent. Okay, they're just going to draw a card. That's fine. Ice Fang Kowaddle is very good here. I think I die to fair stuff here. Like, this, while not like super, super fast or anything, is very strong. All right. Draw your cards. Cardless Agent is scary. Getting into a brainstorm. At this point, I expect that I am dead. All right, sure, sure, sure. But again, opponent is at 7. Like, stuff can happen. Like, once my opponent finds an Uro, though, and they can, like, replay that for a bunch of life, um, then I don't really think that I can win. I'm also just relatively susceptible to just being attacked next turn for 14 damage through one blocker. I guess kind of two. I have Maze of Ith as well. <clears throat> a new Shardless Agent. Coming into a Ponder. Those sorts of cards are just the scariest. No shuffle, there's an Ice Fang Quaddle. All right, at this point I'm just gonna F6. I'll, I'll sit back, narrate what's going on. Let their opponent eat up more of their clock. It may be correct, just like logistically speaking, to force my opponent to uh, do their combo if they find it. Because we're low-ish on clock. We're not in, like, desperation zone or anything. Uh, I think if I was in full try-hard tournament mode, I'd make my opponent fully play out the combo. I think I'll concede if they find the Uro, though. Like, that's the point where, like, the game is over. All right. They found enough. I take three damage here for uh, doing a dumb and tapping the Maze of Ith on my turn, uh, which, is, which is fine. Yeah, so the Cavern Harpy goes back, my opponent does that, they'll do the whole Brazen Borrower thing, that's totally fine. And I guess they can consider junking my Mox Diamond here. Alright, um, I believe I am dead. Not gonna play out that land, leave them guessing, but I think I just get attacked for 11 here. Yeah, that's fine. And my opponent can cast it for free with Aluren. And life's bad. Alright. The block with endurance. This is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I can Maze of Ith Brazen Borrower and stay alive, I believe. Alright, I'm at 1. I'm 1 damage short of killing my opponent. Because this can only block creatures with flying. I'm so close. So close. Oh, I can't even cast that, actually. Uh, I could have if I played Mox Diamond. Uh, I was dead either way, though. Uh, GG's. All right, so now I have to decide if I want to play any differently when I'm on the play. 
like on the play, crop rotation becomes more appealing to just kill my opponent before their allure in matters. What do I take out if I do that? Beladar Retreat is simultaneously insane and awful in this matchup, where every time my opponent doesn't have Aluren, Faladar Retreat is one of the best cards in my deck, and every time they do have Aluren, it's one of the worst cards on my deck. So that's a very weird situation to be in. I guess uh, Pernicious Deed makes Faladar Retreat a little bit worse. Could like board down two of those, keep some in the deck. I can probably go down some number of Endurance as well. Um, let's try kind of a middle ground that looks something like this. Learn's a really hard deck to sideboard against. With any land as a draw, this is a very fast kill. Actually, I can just Green Sun for Dryad Arbor, right? Yavamaya, Dryad Arbor, turn two, play Thespian Stage. Oh, yeah, this hand's actually insane. Oh, it's taking a Mulligan. All right, Yavamaya, cast Green Sun, get Dryad Arbor, pass the turn. And that's just a land and pass. A Mox Diamond, I'm not interested in that card right now. So the real question is like, when do I cast Crop Rotation? I think I do it to surprise my opponent at their end step. Gives them one more draw for a force effect. But there's worlds where my opponent just like ponders this turn. And it is really awkward if they're la if like one of their cards is Brazen Borrower, huh? It's so awkward if they have Brazen Borrower. Force of Will is also pretty awkward. I could just play Endurance. I don't know if it's correct to go for it here. I think I'm just going to play Endurance. I think I'm going to play Scared. And then if I draw any land, I play Felidar Retreat. And then like I can have multiple axes going by which I'm attacking my opponent. Ramunap Excavator is interesting. I think that's a green card that stays in my hand for Force of Vigor, though. Tough game is tough. Potentially given my opponent more looks at Force of Will by waiting here. I see. All right, we're seeing a Brainstorm. That's fine. I think I just let that happen. I just don't think I can make this at Sorcery Speed and then just have it be bounced by, like, Aether Channeler and just, like, open my opponent up to more outs. Um, I really wanted another land drop to just play this Felidar Retreat and make my opponent's life super awkward. I'd also just, like, love my opponent to tap out for some three-mana card. Uh, Balefall Strix is totally fine. I think this is my crop rotation moment, though, now that my opponent has tapped some mana. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this. All right, there is the Force of Will, which is annoying. That's okay. Any land allows me to uh, play Ramunap and then play Dryad Arbor from Graveyard. I think I'm okay with that overall. Or I can miss on lands. That's, that's fine too. I think I attack with Endurance. There's some worlds where my opponent plays Aluren and then I can eat Aluren and Baleful Strix with uh, Force of Vigor. But I think I'm more interested in creating a spot where my opponent can't bounce this Baleful Strix back to their hand ever. Yeah, that's fine. I obviously accept this trade. I was the one who offered it. Now I'll play this for X's one. Get myself in Elvish Reclaimer. And again, I find myself in this position where I just need to draw any land for a large number of reasons. All right, Aluren can happen here. There is Aluren. Shit, my opponent is just going to wait. Play shit on my turn. Okay. With this still on the stack, I think it's time to just do that. I don't want to let that like hit play where my opponent can cavern harpy it. That would be very awkward for me. And assuming this resolves, I can Bojuka bog that Uro if I need to. Uh... Yeah, that was the fear. They can just use that to bounce the Aluren. Yep. That is what it is. I think I'm going to lose this one for not drawing an extra land. It's also possible I lost this one for not just playing aggressively and going for the kill. 
but like given that my opponent has so many baleful strix type cards like i don't feel super good about just like turbo going for the kill does this produce a kill no crop rotation for ancient tomb ancient tomb activate option I mean, no it doesn't produce a kill yeah this is uh this is awkward for me i'm just short on resources here I have to get rid of my Thespian stage to nuke this Uro. Bog target you. And now I just hope that my opponent is light enough on resources after a learn that they can't just kill me immediately. Um, I need I need more stuff off the top though. Like this Validar retreat is very awkward in my hand. This crop rotation isn't much better. Alright, there's the Aluren. Ah, fuck. Yeah, if, yeah, if they had that last turn. No, that had to be a draw this turn, right? Because if they had it last turn, they would have just, like, done their whole card drawing thing. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and concede here and not make my opponent click through it. Like, I very much feel like they have the win. They're at 17 life. Like, they can draw 17 cards here. Um, I, I, I think I'm just going to go ahead and call it there and uh, not waste our collective time. Um, GG. Lots of decision points in that one. All right, uh, what are we in? We're in round four now. I don't have access to white mana. Um, it's really awkward that the Dryad Arbor is in my hand. That actually might mean that this hand is a mulligan. Like, if the Green Sun can get Dryad Arbor on turn one, and then I can play turn two Ramunap Excavator, I like this hand a lot, but that option has been taken away from me. The Dryad Arbor is very bad as a land drop. I'm not comboing fast. I don't really know what this hand's good against. Without Dryad Arbor in the deck, I think I'm just going to mulligan this one. This hand's a keep. Of the stuff here, I actually might not be interested in Mox Diamond. I can just play Green Sun for Dryad Arbor on turn 1, play turn 2 Knight, turn 3 Beldar Retreat, and then it's not like I'm going down an extra card. I don't think I need the acceleration here. And then I don't have to play the guessing game of which one of these lands I want to go back. Mountain, Aether Vial. All right, so we are playing against goblins again. Probably means basic land is correct for turn one. Let's go and find Forest, Green Sun for Dryad Arbor. Um, based on my experiences in other matchups, Felidar Retreat buries goblins alive if they are trying to do fair stuff. But their unfair stuff can go over the top of it. Um, that's my experience uh, from previous matches. I think I'll just play out my Wasteland in this turn cycle. All right, let's go Wasteland into Elvish Reclaimer. And now we're insulated against a uh, who's he, what's it being put in? Uh, Goblin Lackey. Vial <clears throat> goes up to two. Oh, ho, ho, ho. you done fucked up. All right. Sacrifice, destroy your wasteland, turning this into a 3-4, which now means that my creature lives and I can work towards my combo finish. Beautiful. I don't think it matters too much which of these I play here. Do we have an end of turn critter? We do have an end of turn critter but not one that I super, super care about. All right, yeah, this is fine. Uh, War Marshal dies, giving my opponent another goblin. Dark Prospector's scary. There's not a lot to be done about that, but it means there's world where my opponent can cast Muxus next turn. I think that's an it-is-what-it-is situation. Um, I will still sacrifice the Caracas even in face of legendary creatures that I might want to bounce. Let's grab a stage. Okay. So I'm one mana short of making depths work, right? What if I crop rotation for Yava Maya? Does that do it this turn? So tap one, crop rotation for Yava Maya. No, that's one short. Is it just strictly better to play Knight of the Reliquary here? Like I play Knight of the Reliquary, it's not going anywhere. Next turn I sacrifice a land. I guess Wasteland or Rashad... No, Wasteland specifically could be awkward on Thespian Stage. 
but it makes it much less likely that I just die in combat, so I think I'm on board with it, and I don't think I attack with Elvish Reclaimer. <clears throat> we'll see if my opponent has, like, a Goblin Matron to find their Muxus. Goblin Sharpshooter. Sure, uh, this is a very combo-y approach. So my opponent can use this as a mini machine gun. Okay, stuff's happening. So we actually might see this card do something for a change. Do I want to block? Blocking is awkward because of Goblin Sharpshooter. At the same time, blocking also kind of forces my opponent to go all in on these things, and I have, like, another tutor in my hand. Um, this might be fine to just take both blocks. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to kind of put my opponent to it. My opponent can do a whole bunch of pings with Goblin Sharpshooter. Um, I'm willing to see where this goes. Alright, yeah, so that's going at my life total. Rashadonport in the Exile Zone, and a Goblin Ringleader in the Exile Zone, which doesn't do anything. Okay, yeah, and then I just have a kill next turn. I'm just going to check myself here. So this is float a mana, turn, say, Savannah into Dark Depths. I have one, two, the ability to activate. This can all just happen right now and should be very safe. I guess I'll sacrifice the basic here. Find Dark Depths. Use Thespian Stage. Copy Dark Depths. Keep the one with no ice counters. I don't have a green mana available to crop rotation for protection, but I think basically my opponent needs to combo kill me from 18 through a 20-20 blocker. And while that can happen, it's tough. Bling Gang Lieutenant. Yeah, like, let's, let's see if you can do it. I'm at 18. Notably, I am at, a f at four higher life than I would have been if, if I didn't block those creatures. But what, each one of these creatures is worth roughly two damage, right? One from Sharpshooter, one from Sling Gain Draining. Two, four, six, eight, ten-ish damage, plus these things sacrificing themselves. All right. It begins. I get pinged. File goes to exile. Uh, Matron's scary. Matron can get, like, Peshalic Mons. That probably kills me. Actually, there's probably a handful of things that kill me from this position. Like, even a Mog War Marshal is super scary, because that's just three bodies. Alright. Yeah, I think I'm dead here. I'm going to make my opponent play it out, because they're dead if they don't kill me this turn. This is the first time ever that I have actually seen someone... Wait, did they actually cast a card with Horde Master? Yeah, okay, there's a Horde Master in Exile. Yeah, that's really good. Yeah, I um, I am dead. Yeah, I have not seen Horde Master do anything other than just like be a two mana lord in any of the games that I have ever played. So, seeing it uh, playing the slot machine here is sort of interesting. We'll see where it goes. I go to exile second Horde Master. Okay, so I assume this is just lethal if my opponent is attacking in with it like so. My opponent has two Sacrifice Outlets, so I don't necessarily need to get rid of this. I will just block the thing that um, does the most damage to me. But again, I assume that I am dead here. But math is for the person tapping the Goblin Sharpshooter repeatedly. I don't care too much about this. Um, notably, they are at above 21 now that Sling Gang Lieutenant has gotten involved. So I believe I am just, like, deterministically uh, very dead on board here. Muxus in exile for funsies. Alright, sure, sure, sure. Alright, down to three. Alright, uh, this is taking longer than I want it to, I'm just gonna concede. Like, I'm, I'm dead. Let's go to sideboarding. Um, interestingly, this prevents all damage, not all loss of life, which is relevant for Sling Gang. Um, just to say that in case that comes up later. Uh, I'm interested in Prismatic Ending here. Collector Oof and Outland Liberator are playable. How did I play this before? I think I went the Endurances out before for the Prismatic Endings, and I think I went, like, Bog out for Glacial Chasm. That 
looks like approximately what I did. And like I can decide to play Collect Roof. It's a little better when I'm on the play. But like again, it shuts off my Mox Diamonds, which I think are pretty important cards. It may just be that like my opponent can't race me without Vile easily, though. Like they have to have Vile or Lackey, or they just don't race me, just full stop. Well, that's uh that's awkward. That wouldn't have been a keep even if that was the Bojuka Bog. Let's ship that one. Oh god, this hand is also unplayable. Don't think I can just keep a hand that has no combo piece, no tutor, and just two disruption spells. I don't think this wins the game. I think this doesn't lose the game quickly, but I don't know that this actually wins. I need to think about this one for a second. I think I'm going to ship this. I think I can do better. Why have you forsaken me, deck? It's a five-card hand. So it's these five cards, probably. Turn one. Mox, Junking Maze of Ith, play Wasteland. Play Green Sun for Dryad Arbor. Hope to spike land to play Felidar Retreat early. And then hope to spike more land from there. I think that's about as good as I'm going to get. But I am extremely unhappy with this. On so many levels. And I can't keep the Maze of Ith as a land um just kind of with how this looks here and notably i do think dryad arbor is better than elvish reclaimer here because of how important it is for me to play this haymaker card i guess you can make an argument that i'm supposed to keep double green sun but that doesn't feel super great to me there's worlds where i blow up that taiga but i'm really just hoping to draw my own land here Thank you. I will. I will kill Feld. I'm uh, sorry. I will kill Taiga next turn. This gives me a real chance to win a mid range game, which is not something I had without top decking that land. Cavern is a okay. Like, play your Mogwar Marshal. Wow. What was the keep? I don't care about Cavern of Souls mana. I think it is. Much better for me to get rid of Taiga here, in case my opponent has an actual red card, like, say, a Fury that they need to cast. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to Combat and see if my opponent plays Munitions Expert to blow up Dryad Arbor here. Nope. Seeing as the answer is no, my Dryad Arbor attack should be totally safe, dropping my opponent to 19. And I can play Elvish Reclaimer. Elvish Reclaimer is very good with Flagstones. That's an interaction that we haven't seen uh, so far in this league. Uh, when you, like, Reclaimer or Knight of the Reliquary away a Flagstones, uh, it's incredibly powerful. Yeah, your Wasteland's fine. Like, oh, Pyrokinesis, uh, very strong. Yep, but uh, now it's Cat O'Clock here. All right, I will make a cat. And I hope that this card can just carry the rest of the game. My opponent's start was very slow. Like, that Pyrokinesis was pretty good. Um, am I interested in attacking? Yes, and I think I just want more cats here. Like, I think these first couple of lands are just me making cats. And then I can make them larger a bit later. Um, notably, I can Wasteland myself to trigger Landfall at instant speed if I were to see something like another Pyroclasm, or uh, sorry, another Pyrokinesis. <clears throat> um, but I don't think I'm interested in just, like, doing that yet. I want that to be a trick a little bit later. Oh, Thespian Stage is cool. What, do I just attack with these right now? Oh, I can actually get kind of cheeky, huh? Yeah, I can get kind of cheeky. I'm going to go ahead and make a cat. All right, let's just go ahead and attack with these. And then I think I go ahead and copy flagstones with thespian stage. I'll keep the thespian stage flagstones. And then I'll go ahead and search for a land. Yes, I will use this ability. I'll just grab the basic in case I grab a green fetch land like Wooded Foothills later. And then I'll choose the plus one, plus one counters this time. Ha <laughs> ha Oh man, so opponent had another Pyrokinesis. So that means I can just go ahead and Wasteland, 
targeting flagstones? Oh no, bro. Onboard tricks. They are strong. Yes, I will use this ability. Grabbing a savannah. I'll put a plus one, plus one counter on all of my creatures. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's fine. You get to kill one of them. Oh, did not kill one of them? Oh, one goblin. Sure. Oh, but yeah, it's going to kill it later. Okay, yeah. All right. My brain caught up. All right. So I have two four fours at the end of the day, and my opponent just junked a bunch of cards with Pyrokinesis. Weird turn cycle. That may or may not have been better than actually just wastelanding my opponent, though. So, like, that's a thing. <clears throat> All right, there's a goblin sharpshooter. I don't think I'm worried about that right now. Um, this is a lot of damage. All right. Opponent goes to five. And this Elvish Reclaimer is pretty threatening. It's both a 3-4 body, and it, like, threatens to tutor for a lot more damage or a lot more cats. So I don't have access to the Maze of Ith, notably. I have access to a Glacial Chasm if I need it. This deck has more play to it than I was expecting it to. Some of these Felidar Retreat, like, onboard tricks are super cool. With a land next turn, I have, like, a billion potential lethal threats. See what my opponent can do, though. A Goblin Matron. Sure. My opponent can't really get more mana here. Although Sling Gang Lieutenant is really cool. Uh, another Pyrokinesis. That's their third fucking Pyrokinesis. That's a bit much. If I just died, I am going to actually be upset. Like, if I died to the third Pyrokinesis, like, that's very disappointing. And statistically, like, very unlikely for a deck with no cantrips. Okay, sure. This is eight. That'll be seven. Six when they tap again. Yeah, I'm dead. Like, that is an insane, se like, sequence of things that I don't think you ever should play around. Like, it occurs. But, like... I am not going to play around the third pyrokinesis into exactly those things that happened there for exactly lethal damage with well, okay, they had one point to spare. Um, but that that was absurd. Alright, final round here. Um uh, my hand is good but mana light. I think I'm just gonna mull again. Well, that's more mana. Um I'll be keeping this hand probably throwing back Maze of Ith. It does not innately produce mana here, which is kind of a thing that I care about. So the awkward thing with this hand is, like, I want Savannah to cast both of these cards, but I also don't necessarily want to get Wastelanded off of both of my colors, like, given the profile of the rest of this hand. Yeah. It is Flooded Strand. I think I'm more comfortable getting Savannah if I get to uh, put Dryad Arbor into play afterwards. All right, Savannah... Past Green Sun. And the disaster world here is like both Dryad Arbor and Savannah getting answered in a single turn cycle. Like if opponent like fetches end of turn lightning bolt Dryad Arbor and then wastelands me. Like that's probably the game. Okay. The absolute worst did not happen. So I don't know that I actually want to wasteland my opponent. I think my own lands in play are more valuable. I think I am just going to like ignore that portion of the deck. It's possible I'm supposed to play out the Wasteland, so this can't be, like, Lightning Bolted easily. But I think I want to put the Thespian Stage into play now, because if this is in play, there's some worlds where I can produce the Merit Lodge next turn. It's tough, but, like, those worlds exist. Yeah, there is the Lightning Bolt line that I was talking about. All right, there's a Delver. That's fine. I've got an answer to that. Never mind, I've got an answer to the Dragon Rage Channeler instead. Okay, no Wasteland, which is good. Yeah, see, this, this is exactly what I was talking about, like why I wanted to play the Thespian stage. All right, Mox Diamond. Discard Wasteland. Play Dark Depths, and because of Wasteland, I'm just going to go for this immediately. All right, there's my copy. Keep the one with no ice counters. I've got a 2020. My opponent has two ish brazen borrowers as outs to this. 
otherwise they're dead. All right, days I do not care about, although I will pop that out. The opponent did draw the days instead of shuffling it away. Okay, with Brainstorm, that makes sense. All right, there goes said days. Well, actually, that is a different days. The opponent fetches and goes to 17. I can sorts the Plowshares Delver without uh, it stopping me from having a kill next turn. Which is nice. Okay, there's the fetch. If the opponent's got the Brazen Borrower, they do it now so that I don't get to untap and can crop rotation for Sajiri Step. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right. So... Probably do this pre-combat. It's awkward. No, there's already an instant in there, so it probably doesn't matter. But, like, there's some things that my opponent can cast that allow them to put a thing into the graveyard that allows them to turn this into a flyer to block and survive. All right, so let's do this. All right, there is a brainstorm. So opponent can try to turn Dragon Rage Channeler into a flyer here. All right, Blooded Strand doesn't do it. They probably need a sorcery or a creature here. Although I guess also brainstorming into a lightning bolt, they can shoot their Delver. I don't think I'm supposed to wasteland them in response to that brainstorm. Because, like, there's things like double days that matter. Okay, yeah, there's a daze. That's a sorcery in there, so opponent stays alive. I'll go ahead and pay for that. Towards that. Go to combat, attack for 20, my opponent chump blocks. This is all fine. Then I will wasteland them now, because I do not want them to be able to cantrip into Brazen Borrower. Now they just need to have hit the Brazen Borrower with their Brainstorm, or whatever, on the previous turn. I hate how good Delver is. Like, the fact that my opponent had that much play from this position is insane. All right, seems like opponent has a Merktide Regent, so they're on chump block duty again, which is okay with me. Yep, there it is. Okay. I'll go ahead and attack, force the chump block, which puts the Merktide Regent into the graveyard, which is great for me. Then I will go ahead and just Bojuka Bog, you know, a third of my opponent's deck into a different zone. And now we just have to dodge... Um, exactly, Brazen Borrower. Okay, um, I now believe my opponent has no outs. Okay, opponent agrees. Um, GG's. So, versus this deck, I would like additional removal in the form of Prismatic Ending. I would like two more copies of Endurance. From there, I'm not really sure that Glacial Chasm is where I want to be. Like, that card is super cool at buying time. But, like, Wasteland is a thing, and my opponent has a lot of cantrips that dig. I'm not, I'm not sure if this is the matchup for that card. Generally speaking, I don't think I like Crop Rotation very much in this matchup. Especially when my opponent is on the play. It's just, like, not super likely to resolve. That said, it's also not like I'm in love with Felidar Retreat. Like, the effect is extremely powerful. Um... But, like, my mana is going to be attacked in this matchup um, pretty heavily. I'm going to hope... Well, like, let's sort this by mana value real quick. I'm going to hope that just, like, all of these creatures, except ramming up Excavator, dodging Lightning Bolt, just means that I can kind of tango. I don't think I'm going to play the Glacial Chasm after boarding out the crop rotations. And I don't think I want Sylvan Safekeeper in here. All the rest of the cards in my deck just seem better. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Um, this is a weird hand. I have a removal spell, I have a Bojuka Bog, I have an Endurance. Even though this hand doesn't objectively do a lot, I think this is still a keep. And, like, I could be wrong here, but this feels totally fine. Delver of Secrets, I'm not sure if I want to play into Days there. After drawing that, I might be okay with it. I want to be able to do Prismatic Ending turn 1, Source of Plowshares turn 2, Endurance turn 3. Unsure if I'm supposed to get a Savannah or a Basic Plains. Depends on whether or not this ends up getting Wastelanded. I'm going to grab Savannah. And let's just attempt this immediately. 
It's possible I should play the pace of this game slower, though. Yeah, that's fine. But, like, I think especially with, like, two different tapped lands that I don't necessarily want to play immediately, I'm, I'm good with just trading a card for a daze. Because in the worlds where my opponent just plays, like, a second creature in this turn cycle, it, it's super spooky. And, like, I often end up in the same position next turn where I potentially play something into a daze again. Now, this turn is interesting in terms of, like, what land I play and when. But I can just wasteland my opponent and then play swords to plowshares. Like, I know they have an expressive iteration, so taking them off some lands is kind of cool. But I don't really want to be taking my lands out of play since I have such good things like Endurance and Knight of the Reliquary and Felidar Retreat to play later. I think this is Thespian Stage swords to plowshares. I think I like that. All right, it has resolved. Yeah, generally speaking, I don't like Wastelanding Delver anymore. Like, old, old legacy knowledge was, like, if you Wasteland Delver, like, they might never hit that second land drop. Or, like, if you Wasteland them off their first land drop, it's hard for them to hit their second if they didn't lead on a cantrip. And now with, like, Brainstorm Ponder, Dragon Rage Channeler, and Expressive Iteration all being a part of the deck, um... Just trying to take opponent off of land drops has become a much more dubious thing. Um, and I think I'm just going to slow down the pace of the game, clearing out the graveyard a little bit. Um, this gives my opponent a chance to like cast a pretty decent expressive iteration. But then I just use uh, Endurance to clear out the graveyard again, and I keep like Merktide Regent out of the picture for a little while. All right, Delver of Secrets into Exile. That's fine. I can answer that with Prismatic Ending in this turn cycle if I want. I might not even want. I might just want to try to resolve Endurance, especially now. Although I can play Sorcery Speed Endurance and then play Prismatic Ending if I don't care about days. So I'm sitting here thinking, because there's exactly one world that I'm a little scared of, where my opponent just, like, plays a land that's not a fetch land, and then just plays a Merktide Regent, but it would be a small Merktide Regent, so I guess that's fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and play this past the turn with the intention of casting an Endurance, followed by another Endurance and a Prismatic Ending. Alright, what are we looking at, Delver? No flip. My opponent and I are probably in this weird spot where, like, we're thinking about different things. Because my opponent has to be respecting the combo here. You're attacking into Endurance? I'm thinking about it. They are. Alright. So I will go ahead and cast an Endurance. Attempt to nuke my opponent's graveyard. That is a Force of Will. That occurs... Pitch a Delver. That pitched a Delver. A Merktide Regent is awkward here. Because I don't answer that with Prismatic Ending, and then it makes my Endurance worse. At this stage of the game, I have very good top decks. Although my, uh... My creatures aren't necessarily... Fuck, it's Merktide. Yeah. I mean, I tried to play around that very specifically, and failed. Alright. Uh, Wasteland, not a strong top deck here. And um, the way Merktide Regent is worded, it's whenever an instant or sorcery card leaves your graveyard. So I can't really play Endurance super profitably anymore. All right. I think I'm going to play this turn a little awkwardly. I think I'm just going to go ahead and sorcery speed this. I'm not going to choose any targets. I'm thinking about playing this. Like, I don't really care about this Delver right now. And I don't want to wasteland my opponent. I think I'm just going to get this land drop out of the way and save Prismatic Ending for if my opponent plays a Dragon Rage Channeler. That card is much more threatening than Delver is. The reason to get rid of Delver is so that my opponent can't get this scry with like the Delver and the Polluted Delta working together. All right, my opponent's taking the draw. All right. I have basically no choice but to take the four there. We'll see what my opponent can do. Like... Ooh, that's really strong. One, two, three, four, one, two. I think I am supposed to play my land drop after this card. 
I in fact think it is quite important to. Uh, it's just awkward if my opponent has exactly Spell Pierce or Double Daze. But, like, the plus one, plus one counter on this creature so that it can block Murktide Regent profitably is really important. Alright, there's the land drop. Plus one, plus one counter. And Vigilance. I will go ahead and attack with my 4-5. Price of Progress. Um, so I can Wasteland myself and get rid of two of these. Take two, four, six, eight. Yuck. I'll Wasteland my Bojuka Bog, I guess. There's worlds where I want to replay that later. Alright, I go to three. I can just be dead to a Lightning Bolt here. Yep, that's super disappointing. Alright. Yeah. Good good sideboard card is good. Um, but I also just, like... I hate this card because, like, I actively tried to play around this to the best of my ability with some of the best, like, tools in the format to stop it. And it got into play anyway. Like, I had two Endurance and a Bojuka Bog, and my opponent still got a Murktide Regent into play. Um, I think I keep the deck as is. I don't think I want the crop rotations or anything. This hand is good. I will keep it. I have to figure out how to play it. I think Mox Diamond... It, or sorry, I think Mox Diamond throws away Wasteland, but it's possible I'm wrong. Because, like... Wasteland on my Yavamaya would be pretty annoying if I keep Maze of Ith, but Maze of Ith is such a good card in the matchup. Sometimes. Like, Maze of Ith is better than Wasteland as long as I control Yavamaya, and when I don't control Yavamaya, it's a totally different story. Wow, this turn's hard. I think I get rid of the Maze of Ith. I just don't want to get ruined by a Wasteland here. Like, this Maze of Ith is very strong, but I think I just need things that are going to tap for mana no matter what to deploy double green sun and endurance. Alright. Get rid of Maze of Ith. I'm debating being cheeky and casting this with, like, four Dryad Arbor without playing another land. But I think it's better to do this instead and just, like, ignore Dryad Arbor. There's an Elvish Reclaimer. Again, probably not interested in wastelanding my opponent. Just in this matchup, generally speaking. Um, although, we'll see. Like, there's there's worlds where I can change my mind. Alright, Lightning Bolt is fine. Prismatic Ending. I don't have any two drops I want right now. I think I want to play Endurance later. Let's cast this for X's 1 again. That is a Force of Will pitching a Ponder. Again, like, I want to cast this card next turn. I am not going to wasteland my opponent. Like, it it seems super cool in theory. In practice, I have just found that, like, trying to wasteland Delver out doesn't work anymore. I'm gonna stick by my guns on that, especially given that I have four drops in my deck that I would like to cast at some point. Delver is fine. Alright, land is fantastic. I believe I am just supposed to sorcery speed this card. I'm fine with telegraphing it to my opponent, I think. I want to play it around days. Alright. Junk opponent's graveyard there. I think I wait until next turn and just, like, don't give my opponent the opportunity to daze me here. I just, like, don't want to give my opponent a whole bunch of value by, like, waiting, giving them another draw step, like, letting them find the force of will that answers this, or letting them find the brainstorm that allows them to find the lightning bolt that trades with this or whatever. Although, if I decided to change my mind about um, not casting Prismatic Ending, it was correct to leave up the fetch land because of Price of Progress, specifically. Dragon Rage Channeler is totally fine. Brainstorm is totally fine. Alright, they topped something. Okay, there is a fetch land to clear the Brainstorm. I... I hate this deck. It's so mind-numbingly boring to play against because of, like, how much value this deck has just built into it. Like, we haven't even, like, had a game go long enough where we start getting into the expressive iteration Mystic Sanctuary loops, but, like, that's just a thing that I have to worry about as well. Oh, that's pretty lucky. All right, so let's attempt 
charismatic ending on ye old dragon rage channeler fantastic um i am fine taking an attack here like i'm trading three damage for three damage i'm good with that given circumstances opponent goes to 13 now I get to Bojuka Bog, clear the graveyard so that Murktide Regent doesn't come down and just rain on my parade instantly. If Delver flips, Delver does not flip. Now I'm at the point of the game where I like do wish I had Maze of Ith, but I think I needed my mana in these initial turns just because I had so many things going on. Riot Arbor? I think I'm okay with that. I cannot catch a goddamn break today, huh? You have the lightning bolt too. Absolutely fuck me. But I will attempt it. Alright. Tradesies. I do not believe that I am supposed to wasteland. Uh, yeah. That's very good. Okay. Eith is fine. I once again have Murktide Regent to worry about with my opponent hitting any land drop. Um, which super sucks. I don't want to do this. Like, it's such a br bad prospect for me to do this. And then my opponent just goes like, ponder, land drop, expressive iteration, digs himself out of it. But I think it's happening. I'll get super punished if my opponent has like a brazen borrower or whatever. Alright. Goodbye. This also just like puts more things in graveyard for Murktide Regent and whatnot. Yeah. So like, if they rip an EI, it's like so bad for me to have taken this line. And we're flooding. Yeah, like, this is a top deck war where my opponent's top decks, I think, are just better. Like, my... Of my threats, my card caliber is probably higher, but my opponent gets, like, EIs and Ponders and Brainstorms and whatnot to fix, whereas I don't. Okay, cool. They're a little mana heavy as well. Uh, am I playing that? I don't think I'm playing that. It's pretty likely that they have a counterspell, right? Like, counterspells and Price of Progress are the things that make sense. Yeah, I think I'm just going to wait till I find one more land drop. I'd like to find some basics so that I don't get just absolutely destroyed by Price of Progress. Yeah. Um, this is the sequencing to play around days, not the sequencing to maximize the power level of my cards. All right, cool. My card has resolved. <laughs> See if my opponent just ends up, like, having double price of progress and I just die. Okay, sure. There's a Valk. Lightning Bolt occurs. Another fetch. Arctide Regent is happening. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and fetch. Probably grab the basic forest here. Uh, I'll make a 2-2. Two -two. And I'm going to just hope to do something more threatening than what my opponent is doing. The issue here is that every land I play makes me worse against Price of Progress. Alright. That's a 2-2. Two -two. I guess I should Thespian Stage copy Forest. Force my opponent to blow up my Thespian Stage. I'm just going to make sure I clicked on the right card there. Thespian Stage. Target Forest attempt to copy that. My opponent blow it up with Wasteland. Yeah, that's fine. So the clock that my opponent and I have are similar. But I think my opponent's very favored. Like, my first of all, my opponent gets the like first attack. Second of all, my opponent's thing has evasion and mine don't. Like, thirdly, my opponent has a lot of play that I don't in terms of what they choose to dig for. I just play the top card of my deck no matter what it is. Yep. I eat 5. I go to 10. It's a basic land. I think I am supposed to turn these into 3-3s. Three Worth the same amount of damage, but if I turn these into 3-3s three and then I draw a fetch land, I can turn them into 5-5s, five and there's worlds where that trades with a Merit Lodge token. Although if I make a 3-3, three three, I'm worse against Lightning Bolt. I guess if I make the 3-3s three this turn, it's always lethal next turn, which is not true the other way. Alright, play Falador Retreat. Plus one, plus one counter in Vigilance. Bash in for 12. Opponent's at 5. 
Dead to Price of Progress. Not dead to Lightning Bolt. Well, dead to Lightning Bolt a different way, more accurately, because it's just like a removal spell on a creature, and then I only hit my opponent for three. Uh, I guess I'm not 100% dead to Lightning Bolt. I can draw a fetch land. Well, my opponent didn't immediately turn Murktide Regent sideways, so there is hope. All right, are you attacking? All right. So they have to have something if they are attacking, right? Because they are just deterministically dead on board. Yeah, cool. Oh, wait. Okay, that occurred. Yeah, opponent playing out that fetch land. Oh, no, they... Yeah, opponent playing out that fetch land killed them. Interesting. Okay. So I guess strat is the same. All right, I will play first. Uh, and so awkward. I think I'm keeping it because, like, I just have three mana, three removal spells, but, like, I have no way to actually start winning the game, which is a little frustrating. And, like, I very much do not want this Dryad Arbor in my opening hand ever. I think I played this this turn. Rather than uh, the Yavamaya. I don't want the Yavamaya disappearing. Apt Mystic Sanctuary. Sure. Hey, it is a green sun. I will play that. Or X is one. It gets me a Reclaimer. Again, awkwardly, this is a Lightning Boltable Reclaimer. But I don't want to like do anything crazy like Wasteland my own Yavamaya or anything. I am very much not interested in that. Generally speaking, it's going to be my plan to use the Prismatic Ending on Delvers and Dragon Rage Channelers and try to save Swords to Plowshares for that blue asshole. For sure, sure. Dragon Rage Channeler is fine. Again, I'm going to Prismatic Ending that on my turn. Um, that's a little more awkward now. Now I have two things that I want to remove. And I can't play both in one turn cycle because of like the way my mana works out. So I will actually source the plowshare as a dragon rage channeler in this spot, even though that's not something that I want to do because of days. Yep. I regret nothing. It's just a little frustrating. Uh right. Prismatic ending on Dragon Rage Channeler. I missed a land drop, so I can't do something cool like fetch and then rotate immediately. To turn this into a big big uh, I'm just gonna hold this up I'm probably gonna turn my wasteland into something that produces colored mana all right Delver does not flip brainstorm is fine I'm gonna get buried by expressive iteration in a few turns like I kept a hand with all these one for one spells and I like haven't drawn a combo piece so I can't just like go get the other piece that I'm missing easily it's fine activate this I'm gonna sacrifice wasteland Absolutely cannot get a break. So now I can't just like get a combo piece here and just rotate for the other one. I might still get Thespian Stage instead of Savannah. Just so that if, if I top deck Adepts, I can get it. Savannah's just so good if I get Wastelanded though. Or Planes. I can also just get Maze of Ith while I control Yavamaya. That's not crazy. I'll do that. It, it just sets me back so... Fuck! Cool. I'll pass the turn here. Alright. So my opponent can use the whole Delver thing to scry. Another creature of some kind. Um, which is super unfortunate for me. Yeah. This is, this is the point where I start losing, right? Like, expressive iteration happens. My opponent gets a two for one. I have two not mox diamonds in hand after, like, playing another one in my opening hand. Uh, I think the most likely way that I win this match is now by time. Like my opponent can cantrip towards a um, Wasteland to beat this Maze of Ith, or to take me off Yavamaya, to take me off multiple mana sources at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Untap that. Alright, draw your card. Um, I don't think I cast that yet. Delver's not doing anything yet. Opponent doesn't have a fetch land in play. Found another creature. Or land, I guess. <sighs> yeah, there's the wasteland. So at this point, I'm forced to use a removal spell on the Delver. 
in a way that is not profitable for me. Alright. Now my opponent can just play out another creature, like a Murktide region or something. Alright. Um, I play this, I can play around a Spell Pierce type card. I guess I will do so. Uh, not happy about it, and if my opponent like randomly boarded in Meltdown to like play around these exact situations, it would be a disaster. Like my opponent has nine cards in hand right now while this brainstorm is happening. I'm not winning this game. Again, the only way I win, I think, is my opponent timing out. All right, Green Sun's not particularly strong here, and I also just think it gets countered. All right, it has resolved. I have an Elvish Reclaimer. All right, there is a Brazen Borrower. Um, I'm not going to play my removal spell into days here. I'm not interested in that. I need to get what value I can off of my cards. It matters a lot. My opponent can also just play a Murktide Regent this turn, and I want to use a removal spell on that, although that means they can hard cast Force of Will. So, like, that's a thing. Do I want to attack? I don't know if I want to attack. I don't really want to search into a fucking submerge. I guess I'll beat down. I think I'm okay trading hits for three for hits for three. Sure. Alright. I will take the three damage here. I think at this point, I'm going to go ahead and fire off this spell. Because there's a lot of worlds where I want to play Felidar Retreat on my turn. Force of Will. That's fine. This is not one of those worlds. There is an Elvish Reclaimer, if that meets another Force of Will. I didn't board in Glacial Chasm, right? Just checking. I did not. I will bash for my three. I think I'm very likely to lose to my opponent just playing a Murktide Regent. Uh, but I've thought that for many turns, so... <clears throat> you know. Good news is I'm not losing the Price of Progress as of right now. Those are famous last words, though. All right, I'm down to 11, and we're chilling. All right, that's an Endurance. I'm going to go ahead and attack for 6. Puts my opponent to 7. If I cast this now, it sucks if my opponent has Daze. If I cast this in my opponent's upkeep, it sucks if they have Force of Will. I think I'm still going to cast it in their upkeep, though. Lightning Bolt, sure. Does that change things? Does that change when I want to cast this card? I don't think so. I'm going to go with upkeep. Good god. Is a daze on their own lightning bolt? Okay. I'm at five. I can die to price of progress. Plus brazen borrower attack. Now that there's only four lands in play, it's correct to do this in their upkeep. Sure. All right, and this is my attempt at playing around a murktide getting into play this turn. Yep, sure. That's fine. All right. Someone dies in this turn cycle. Cool, cool. Alright. I go to two. So I'm dead to... I have to attack. I have to try to kill my opponent or they kill me on the backswing. Yeah. Uh, so, like, opponent's got three cards. If one of them saves them, one of them saves them. <sighs> so I can keep this creature from getting shuffled away. But I don't think I have anything that actually saves me here. I guess I can see if I do. None of this gives me life. None of this stops a creature. I will just Bojuka Bog my opponent here. Oh shit, I didn't actually save my creature like I was intending on doing. Um, this is just because I'm like dead on board. Alright. There's my attack for three. And I'm dead to my opponent's swing. Like... That's very frustrating. Overall thoughts on the deck list. We went 2-3. I think this deck list is pretty darn good, though. Like, my losses were to some absolute shenanigans. Like, I think the Alluren matchup is tough. Because, like, I, I beat them on fair draws and I lose to them on unfair draws. I think my opponent played uh, quite well in the last round. Like, they are... They are a good player. I know who they are. Um, but I am I am frustrated with how I drew in some of these games. Like, I had multiple games where I drew three or four of the Mox Diamonds, and, like, 
when that sort of thing happens, you're going to lose. And I had so many outs to beat my opponent at so many turns, and I just, like, failed. And in that Goblins round, like, my opponent had three copies of Pyrokinesis in a way that is pretty much impossible to play around. So I feel like I got the short end of the stick when it comes to when it came to variants tonight, but I feel good about the deck. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go cry myself to sleep. Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button on the way out. It helps out a lot. Have a great rest of the day and do what you can to get something banned from Blue Red Delver. See ya!